when I was first formulating ideas, I was listening to a, a piece on Radio Lab, and it was about there was this craze and period of time when people were going over Niagara Falls in a barrel, and it was such a big deal, and it was really about defying gravity and being a superhero in a certain way, and there was something that really resonated, and they, they used the term gravity heroes in, uh, in the story, and that really sat with me, and, and to me it's that, it's that to make the choice to upset the ground underneath yourself is so rare and so heroic because to actually make the choice to move toward a better way of life, even if you're going to get, give up all security and all sense of, of, of what's underneath your feet, um, you know, I find people that do that and do that by choice to be remarkable and it's something I aspire to myself. I was wrapping my head around the idea that, you know, it, change usually happens in a major way um, because of something catastrophic like um, you know a person who's close to you dies or you almost die or drug overdose the kind of things that kind of shock your system and make you look at life in a different way because you have no choice um, but I was really looking at well but what about the times in life where you make change for other other reasons and the kind of um, heroic decision that that is to embark on that because it's no less traumatic and maybe some ways is more traumatic because you are, are, are choosing to to shake the ground underneath yourself and to get rid of, of what your security is good or bad and so it was interesting to me in, in the piece to really kind of examine that and see if I could tell that story any piece that I've made that I feel has significant content it's because is in some way autobiographical. I don't mean the story of my life, I mean that it is an experience that I know and understand and feel like I have something to say, something about. And so in this particular case, it, it's what I'm experiencing personally right now. And the way I set this piece up was uh, in three sections. And the first, the first is really about destruction and violently changing a, a way that things are knowing that it needs that kind of shock and upset to actually be significant. The second section is about really going within and developing a greater understanding of where you are and the why that got you to this point. Exploring the subconscious and, and understanding you know, to the greatest extent possible what all these things mean. The last section then is was to look at, well then what do you replace that with? What's the new path? And starting the piece I didn't know what that was. And my hope was that through having this precious medium to be able to try things and work things out was that I would discover it. The music has changed in that it started off as a very large and almost operatic in scale because the feelings in the piece are that big. And and I think the overall outcome of the piece will also have that, that scale. Um, but by having the music also illustrate that, it became, it, it, it actually undermined the intimacy of the piece. And, and so by having, having music that's much more contemplative, I focused a lot of the, the music um, is Antony and the Johnsons. And uh, I actually heard him sing maybe 15 years ago in New York, and I, I'd gone, gone to a concert. And I think I wasn't mature enough to understand and appreciate the music at the time. I thought it was beautiful, but it didn't really resonate with me. Until recently, working on this piece, and I kind of, I, you know, I, I saw, saw the name and thought, oh, I know that music, and listened to it again, and suddenly it had a really profound impact on me. And it's been funny, because any time I've been listening to it or had it playing, people always walk by and go, who is that? They, they want to know, they want to know more, more about it. But, you know, so, so to have gone from, at one point, uh, you know, music from the ring cycle <laughs> to this very uh, plaintive uh, and intimate music is a really big shift, but in some ways I think has a, has a, big, a larger scale and impact because of that contrast and because it looks at the largeness of small feelings or the largeness of, of private and, and quiet feelings. Um, and so I started by choreographing a big punk rock uh, dance with a lot of dancers and that that conjured up the energy of what I was was looking for, but it wasn't the it wasn't the right thing. It wasn't the right path because I realized this was a much much more intimate journey. And so having done that, then I worked on this solo with with Brett in the beginning, and 
you know, I said to, said to Brett, we're, we're still going to be in that same, same place, that the dance that we did before, even that's going away, that's energetically the place that you're coming from, and then made this really contemplative, contemplative solo, um, you know, stylistically very different, the music's very different, um, still tapping into that energy we had explored before, and I, you know, I don't think one would have happened without the other, you know, if we hadn't gotten all that trouble of making, you know, this big dance that nearly killed off the dancers, wouldn't have been able to arrive at a solo that had the level of depth and interest that we ended up making afterward. Trey and I got really interested in the idea of using some pinatas and blindfolds. The idea that people were just going for it, using their bodies as sticks, trying to whack this thing up and try to get inside of it. So that has sort of become um, a really important part of the piece thus far. Um, the pinatas came about really thinking about this idea of destruction and, and, you know, pinatas are interesting because in some ways they're mundane, you know, it's a, it's a typical children's party element. It's not exactly this, but it's like brushing your teeth or it's like the daily things of life. It's a, it's a social construct, um, but there's a violence built into it. And I like the idea of taking something very normal and contrasting that with the harshness of, uh, you know, punk and how those two things come together as a way of expressing, breaking something open, um, making it, you know, ending it, ending the way that it was before. Yeah, the costumes for this piece will be three very different looks. Uh, we want to introduce the first look, which is more of uh, like punk clothing, very much in black and white, trying to really keep the palette pretty stark in terms of being not ha introducing a lot of color and leaving the color for the pinatas and the blindfolds. The second piece is all based on flesh tones and involves um, a series of hoodie jackets that I've been trying to create. Andre told me about halfway through the process um, that it was the most rigorous design process she'd ever been through. And the reason for that is, and this is the reason I like to work with Andre, is that she's so open to this way of working. Um, I think this is a process that's developed with me over time, but has maybe kind of, you know, it's reached a level larger than it has ever been in that I don't want to work with a designer and say, okay, I've worked out this whole complete idea and here, here's the, I need you to, to execute 12 costumes that look like this. I'm not so much interested in that, um, A, because I'm not a costume designer and I want to work with somebody who can bring more to the table than what I can. This piece in particular, I'm going to be fascinated each night to see how it falls on the audience. Um, you know, I won't really go into the reasons why that is, um, but one of the conclusions for me that's important is that everybody in the theater understands that, you know, this construct that you thought that we're separate, that okay, we're up here on the stage, we're, we're doing our performance, and you're in the dark, quiet, very separate from that. I really want people to come away understanding that, no, actually, this was us, and that, to an equal extent, the, the participant who's, who's watching and being audience for it um, is the same as the person on stage, and that, and that this is an enterprise that we can't do independently, that we have to do together. So. So if the, the, I guess this is one, I guess one rare occasion where I'm, I'm, I really want people to, to understand that. Well, and, and even if it's not on an intellectual level, just on, on some, uh, you know, more base plane, that if they come away with that understanding that they were a participant um, in, the, in the performance by their observation, then, then that would be really great. You know, I, I, there's just a few select people who I really sat and talked to. Okay, this is how I experienced this piece, and this is what this is about, and really explaining the concept. And I, in in every, in every single instance, that person has then gone on to make a major life change, <laughs> to the point that, like, quitting jobs and like like that kind of thing. And um, I'm just hesitant to tell anybody <laughs> about the piece at this point. <laughs> It's like some like mysterious relic from Indiana Jones that if you touch it, your <laughs> your life's gonna turn inside out. So, kind of keep it to myself.